Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And oh my God, look at all the ads. Look yeah, at that's a lot of ads. All the ads. This is... Adtastic. Adtastic. This is coming from the dailymail.uk. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put a trigger warning oh, on, on this video because I think it's going to... I think it's gonna trigger some people. Oh, what doesn't? I think because everything triggers everybody. Um, this is this is an interesting article though. This is talking about the state of Hollywood, and it's basically outlining things, you know, observations that a lot of people who cover pop culture and cover movies uh, have noticed mm -hmm. firsthand, and they've been either verbalizing it or just nodding in agreement, afraid to verbalize it. And they're talking about the climate in Hollywood right now and how it's become openly hostile to white dudes. And what this article is apparently is a correspondent from LA, uh, Carolyn Graham, saying that she has talked to several people in Hollywood mm -hmm. and she said that it's worse. It's worse than what you're seeing on Twitter. It's worse than what you're reading about in the mainstream media, that basically the studios have instituted mandates that said, you know, white men, we don't want you. We don't want you in Hollywood anymore. Or if you're going to work on movies or TV shows or whatever, you're going to do so without credit mm -hmm. because we can't have your names attached to these uh, projects. And there's going to be some pushback, but they said a lot of people working in Hollywood right now feel utterly helpless because they're like, wait a second, this is kind of reverse racism here. You know, uh, you're pushing for diversity, but it's not really diverse if it's, you know, no white men allowed. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm 100% for diversity and more representation where it makes sense. Um, I think that's I think that's yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it. What I have a problem with is, uh, I mean, when I talk about diversity, I mean, like actual diversity, which means you try to include everyone, um, not revenge. There's a difference. <laughs> so, well, this isn't even about this isn't even about like revenge or anything like well, that. Well, no, this, it isn't the fact that they're trying to eliminate a certain group, claiming that they have to to be fair. Yeah, and um, it's really I guess it's it's shaking Hollywood worse than than uh, people are letting on, and uh, we're gonna talk about. It. They interviewed a bunch of people in Hollywood who said, "Yeah, this is this is bad." You want to know why they're casting decisions? are being made the way they are right now. This is why. This is that new mandate. And we talked about, you know, on the Disney end of things, you know, talking about how, you know, Disney basically purged all uh, white male voice actors or white voice actors from from uh, non-white roles, even if they'd been grandfathered into those roles. Right, and then other blogs are now celebrating how Hamilton is a you know win for diversity because all the actors are played by mostly played by uh, diverse people, even though the characters themselves, the a the actual figures were historically white. Doesn't matter. So it's a it's a double standard. Yeah, so Hollywood, this it's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be pushback or not. So uh, she talks about how Hollywood is in a really bad financial state. Oh, right yeah, now. no kidding. Uh, they talk about the protests and how polarizing the protests have been. I think everyone can agree with that. But they said there's a revolution underway. White actors are being fired. Edicts from studio bosses. Which I want to point out are probably mostly white men. Yeah. Well, I, think I, I, got, I got an edict. Studio bosses need to be replaced. I think what's happening is is I have to think that people are probably throwing people under the wheels of the bus to save their own asses. Well, I think they should be replaced. I mean, to start at the top, work our way down. Yep. Um, so this is these are edicts from studio bosses making it clear that only minorities, racial and sexual, can be given jobs. A new wave of what has been termed by some as anti-white prejudice is causing writers, directors, and producers to fear they'll never work again. One described the current atmosphere as more toxic than Chernobyl, wow. with leading actors afraid to speak out amid controversy or concern they will be labeled. Oh, of course racist. they will. They will immediately be labeled. Uh, any, they'll be labeled some phobist, hundred percent, no question. Speaking of Chernobyl, is is this why we have two Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Because mm -hmm. the one has two white guys working on it, one of them being the Chernobyl guy, and the other one's got two women working on it. Well, if you're gonna 
cast by diversity for diversity's sake and not by who's best for the job, um, you might might as well just start, you know, liking not having money. Yeah. Because that's what's going to happen. If somebody who is diverse is the best fit for the job, then by all means, by, hire them for sure. But like, I know you were giving me some examples, but that's not what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk because they, they talk to some people and it sounds like on the surface, it doesn't sound like it's really, you know, that bad because they're talking about Jordan Peele. And uh, he said that he stayed in public. He didn't want to hire a leading man who was white. Now, so then reverse that. Someone said I didn't want to hire a leading man that was black. What would happen? All hell would break loose. But how he said it wasn't, I don't think it was. He's basically like, I don't see myself casting white dudes as the leads in my movies. Not that I don't like white dudes, but I've seen the movie before. Now, you know, it could have been a lot worse how he said it, but you're but right. If it, was, if, you flip if, it, it, if it was reversed, it would be a problem. If you flip it, it, it yeah. Uh, one studio exec responded privately. Again, they're, they they quote a bunch of people. They don't out them. People are going to be like, well, how do we know they're not making and it And that's up? true. They could. They, it, it could be. It's like unlikely, but possible. It's, I think it's unlikely because we're hearing a lot of the same kinds of things on the back end, and we're actually seeing it. Like I said, you know, Disney's new mandate where they're getting rid of all the, the white voice actors, you know, and we're seeing, you know, nine times out of ten when they, they recast a part or whatever, it's not a white person that they're casting. Definitely not a white man that they're well, casting. Ariel's not even allowed to be white anymore. But She's I'm, a redhead. Just saying, it's we're we're seeing pieces of this on the front end, and it does seem like this is a thing. So, uh, one studio executive responded privately. If a white director said that about hiring a black actor, their career yep. would be over. Yeah, it would be. Yep, it would be. Um, so Peel is more vocal than most about his hiring policy, but his outlook is increasingly widespread. Uh, let's see here. Dozens of producers, writers, and actors have spoken to the mail on Sunday about the wave of reverse racism pulsing through the industry. Speaking on condition of anonymity. Yeah, because if it came out, right. hey, Tom Hanks called us up and said he's afraid he's not going to get work anymore. He didn't, by the way. I mean, we're not knowing that. Uh, yeah, but you know what would happen. This is the same right. This is the same reason why when we get... Um, we get people come to us, you know, they're like, well, you prove it. You prove it. It's like, no, you don't reveal your sources. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not but, cool. But we are hearing the same sorts of things from people like on the animation industry side of things. Uh, you're seeing it kind of in comics too. This is, this is a, a, a definitely a trend and Hollywood absolutely is going to be leading the charge. Uh, the executive confirmed the climate is now toxic for any white middle-aged man in show business. Their careers are pretty much over. Unless you're Keanu Reeves. Unless you're Keanu Reeves, right? They can take... Well, see, he's not a white. He's like half Asian. Well, that's true. That's so true. So he's, he's safe. He, he is safe. Uh, they continued. We're only hiring people of color, women or LGBTQ to write, star, produce, operate the cameras. Wait, 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 Work in craft whoa, whoa, services. Whoa. This is ridiculous. If you're white, you can't speak out because you will instantly be branded racist or condemned for white privilege. Okay, here's my thing. I am 100% against racism, but I'm 100% against racism in all forms. And I'm sorry, you can sit there and scream, yes, it doesn't count. It's not racism, it's against white people. Like hell it isn't. Uh, that's the definition of racism. If you're against any race, but a person because of their race, that's racism. I'm sorry. But it's still racism. I would love to see some of these things go to court because this is, if, if it was the other way around, it would go to court and it should. Yeah. I would love to see this, you know, go to court because if this is true and they can prove it, then that's, you know, that th th there's definitely, uh, you know, some conspiracy here. There's definitely some uh, discrimination going on then if that's the case. Um, and I don't think that's right. I mean, I think there definitely should be more diversity. I 100% yeah. believe that there should be. Um, However, that being said, that doesn't mean everybody needs to be anything but straight white and male. Yeah, well, what's going on is there, there's fear because, what, and this goes back to everything we've talked about with cancel culture, where people are so afraid of being canceled by the media, being canceled by social media, that they overcorrect. Mm -hmm. They make changes that nobody is asking for, nobody expects them to mm -hmm. make. Like saying, hey, look, let's be more conscientious, let's be more diverse in our hiring. Right. Great. Fantastic. Let, let, let's do that. But let's get rid of all white people because we're afraid we're going to get canceled if we don't. 
Yeah, that's not what people are asking. That's, that's not, well, that's some people are asking for that, but the majority of people are not. Don't listen to Twitter. Twitter's not real. The pendulum has swung so far. Everyone is paralyzed with fear by the idea anything you say could be misinterpreted and your career could be ended instantly. There are a lot of hush conversations going on, but publicly, everyone is desperate to be seen to be promoting diversity and too terrified to speak out. It's imploding. A total meltdown. Well, when they lose money, you know. Well, that's what she started the article with. She's like, Hollywood is hemorrhaging money. Now is not the time to throw more chaos into mm -hmm. the, you know, it's, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, the failure to nominate actors of color for the Oscars. We talk about that. And again, this is over correction. Mm -hmm. um, they said the latest buzzword in Tinseltown is, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. If it's BIPOC or BIPOC, BIPOC, an acronym for black, indigenous, and people of color. It's not just POC, it's BIPOC. And MENEMY, MENEMY, which means a white male enemy of the diversity movement. Everyone wants to be able to check all the boxes for each new hire according to one Oscar-nominated insider. God, that's stupid. Uh, directors normally have a say about who's in their project. Not anymore. It's all well, about... Well, Peel does. Peel does. Mm -hmm. uh, Ava DuVernay does. Uh, it's all about by POC hiring. It's coming directly from the... Here's the thing. It's coming directly from the heads of the studios who know their jobs are on the line. White middle-aged men are collateral damage. Well, then why don't we just change out the heads of the studios? I don't know. They're afraid. I mean, this is it. It's like everybody's throwing everybody else under the wheels of the bus because they're afraid of getting canceled. And the thing is, I would say you're overreacting, but we have seen how little it takes mm -hmm. for Hollywood to cancel people. Yeah, it's ridiculously stupid. You know, uh, an actor in his 50s who's worked on some of the biggest shows of the past 20 years described how during a recent audition, the casting director told him he was perfect, but they had been instructed to hire a person of color for the role. I get it. I really do. The so wait, said. so they're not saying that in the description for the tryout. They're not saying you can't be white because that would be discrimination. Legally, that would be, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's understood. And we'll, we'll talk about this because I think that this is going on uh, to some degree in animation and comics, mm -hmm. too, and how far it gets. I think I think really at the end of the day, what's going to change, uh, you know, things back into a meritocracy? And that's, that benefits everybody. I don't care right. what your skin color is. I don't care what you got between your legs. I don't care whose parts between their legs you like. Uh, what would benefit everybody is if we went back to the best people doing you know getting the best jobs the best roles the best books the best you know that's best for everybody because then you're going to make good stuff and you're going to make lots of money right uh, money fixes a lot of problems i understand hollywood still has a long way to go before people of color are properly represented on screen but how am i supposed to pay my mortgage put food on the table everyone is terrified you can't say anything because then you set yourself up for public crucifixion Dismissing complaints, however, quietly expressed. You talked about uh, Ava DuVernay, uh, who basically said, yeah, um, we're not hiring white people. She basically said that. Mm, she did. Yeah. She said to the white men, this thread, if you don't get the job you were up for, kindly remember, bias can go both ways. This is 2020 speaking. Uh, it may seem an irony then that Hollywood has long been seen as the heart of liberal America. Leading figures from the industry have a reputation for lecturing the world on issues of human rights, diversity, and the environment, blah, blah, blah. But wokeness is not only an increasingly pervasive, it seems impossible to navigate. Uh, Killing Eve's Jodie Comer, celebrated for playing a bisexual assassin last week, faced intense criticism uh, for dating a sportsman, said to be a card-carrying Trump supporter. Oh yeah, how dare you. How dare you. Halle Berry had to apologize for considering even, she didn't take the role. She had to apologize for considering taking on the role of a transgender man. Mm -hmm. Uh, she just thought about it. She didn't it. have enough checkboxes. She did. She had, she had a couple of them, but not enough. Uh, such is the culture shift that uh, one studio is now preparing to shoot a film with an all-black cast and crew, uh, a project which normally should give cause for celebration. Now, here's, here's the catch. But when a white woman, a highly respected executive, was tasked to oversee the production on location, she was told she would receive no on-screen credit. So they hired... Uh, and they, all, hired, they, they hired kids, they said, that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And we're going to talk about this because we've seen this before. Uh, a source from the studio behind the project said the kids making the film are fresh, great new talent, but they're kids. None of them are over 25. Most of them have never been even been on a movie set, let alone a movie which Wait, costs 20 million. So they million. gave them $20 million just because they weren't white. Yes. 
Okay. They don't know the basics about how union rules work, about taking regular breaks or how long you can shoot in a day. Uh, we needed to protect our investment and make sure they got up on time and shot what they needed to. Otherwise, we could have a multi-million dollar train out of control. So they brought the experienced white woman in but she's not allowed to put her name on the film because it destroys the narrative of it being an all black cast and crew. So she comes in and makes sure it gets done, make sure it gets done well, then they're going to get all the credit. Yes. And then there's like, you know, more movies down the road or whatever. They'll get them, not her, even though she did the work. Yes, but she should be thankful she's at least getting to work. Yeah, but I mean, it's also, I mean, I mean I'm hoping they're making these comments about them not getting out of bed and stuff because they have real reason to think that, not just they're going to make those assumptions because that's also not right if they did. No, I think what's going on, I think it's an ageism thing. I don't think it's a racism yeah, thing. Yeah, because that's, if that's, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they're making these comments, they have to put her there to make sure they get out of bed on time and stuff like that. And it's not because they have legitimate reason to say that. That's really a douchey thing to say. So they brought in a nanny, basically. Basically, a mom, and that's kind of like, like, that's like implying that when you're if you're 25, what were you doing when you were 25? I was married. But before that, you're running complete uh, departments. Yeah, and... I was. Well, it's a different time. I mean, I was I was the head of um, let's see, I was a newspaper editor. I was the managing editor for two different papers. Um, I had my own uh, web business. Uh, by the time you're 25. By the time I was 25. So the, yeah. the making the comment, no, remember 25 is kind of that is ageist. And I mean, yeah. unless they had reason to, uh, they might have had a reason these people did not get up on time before. But it it does seem kind of like, well, they're new. They probably want to get their butts out of bed yeah, on time. I think that's a little condescending. I think Orson Welles didn't he make Susan Kane at 26? I think he was like 26. I don't or so know. So I mean, I think that's a bit condescending to, yeah. to people a little bit. But you know, maybe but, he had a reason. But Look, we 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 saw this before, and we've seen this before. We've seen this where they have to bring in uh, ringleaders mm -hmm. to to kind of manage the chaos for people who are not used to working in the industry. I'm gonna point out Shira. They're gonna be like, of course you are. Just, of course I am. I didn't. He did it. He did it. it I did me. it. So the story, and this is before all of this this broke loose. The story with Shira and the Princesses of Power for Netflix was, it's a group of young, diverse women from Tumblr. Diversity, um, it's all women. It's all women, mostly white women too, by the way. Uh, young, diverse women from Tumblr got together to reboot Shira for today's audiences. And after a couple of episodes, and you can see the early episodes were kind of like, what the frick is going on? Uh, after a couple of episodes, Chuck Austin, veteran animation director Chuck Austin was brought in, but he was never mentioned in interviews and he was never mentioned uh, when they talked about the show or the no, show. He runner. was in the credits though. He was in the credits and he had an interview, I think after the show where he basically said, well, I was happy to do it. I, I just, you know, basically let them shine. And I just kind of step back. It's like, no, I think what was going on is Chuck Austin knew he wasn't going to get work in the animation industry being an older white dude. But as long as they, they bring him in to babysit. He could be hero, the hero, but listen, hero, support. Hero, sub, hero support. Hero support. He goes to the sidekick lounge. Even though he's the one doing the work. So, yeah. But this is it. We need to protect our investment. When they put millions of dollars on the line, you got to make sure it gets done. This is insulting the women. We need to bring a woman in who's brilliant and get it done. But she's not going to have credit. So, so even a woman isn't you know enough. Yeah, I mean that's that's isn't that sad? Like you you do all this work, but because they they want to be seen as as being progressive. But if she not. was if she was not white, she would get credit. Yeah, probably. No, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is what this is what the Hollywood insiders are saying. We're sending this woman who's brilliant to run things on the ground, but she won't get any title credit. People won't admit it. They can't admit it. But reverse racism is definitely going on. You could argue that it's a good thing that this swinging of the pendulum so far the other way is only fair after years of white privilege. But at what cost? Surely it's best for everyone if people are hired on their basis of talent and ability. I can tell you we're hiring people based purely on their ethnicity, gender, and social media profiles. This is very obvious. We're like, where did this head runner of this show look at look at the situation with She-Hawk? We're like, mm. what did she do before she got hired to be like showrunner for She-Hawk? Uh, tweet a lot and write a couple of and books. Complain about men. And complain about men. Uh, one, one film editor who did dare speak out has been has seen his career all but destroyed. Uh, Nathan Lee Bush, who has shot commercials for corporations such as Budweiser and Nike, criticized a post on a private Facebook group, private, which read, I need an editor looking for black union editors. Bush, who was white, described the advertisement as anti-white racism and wrote, look, 
Uh, well, I remember what, this. Yeah. Yeah. Look what we're asked to tolerate. The people openly and proudly practicing racism are the ones calling everyone a racist to shut them down. And anyone who dares speak up is canceled. Their livelihood and dreams stripped from them by a, a bang mob. Um, but voicing his concerns proved disastrous. One of Bush's main clients, the U.S. restaurant chain Panera Bread, vowed never to work with him again, and they made him apologize. Yeah, but that's what the guy did. He basically came on there and said he only wanted to talk to somebody that was, you know, that yeah. racist him. And then he's like, dude, if anybody else did this, they'd be in trouble. And then now he had to apologize. But you're not allowed to say that. You'll get canceled. Uh, it has taken several tumultuous years for this perfect storm to come together. They talk about Me Too, Harvey Weinstein, etc. Uh, they talked about the backlash over Oscars So White. Um, they talked about, you know, last year having big hits, including Black Panther and... and uh, done crazy. by white people, by the way. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> crazy rich Asians. Well, yeah, Black Panther, originally the character was created by two white guys. You, you never hear about that, though. You never hear about it. But then they sell the winners were white. Again, this is a case of, like... There could be good intentions, but it goes wait, wait, wait. so, so Before wrong. Before you even get that far, Hollywood picks the winners. Yeah. Their own, their own, um, like, uh, guild, actors guild, picks the winners. They vote to pick the winners. So while they're sitting here screaming about it, the people that got, that won, they won because their, their, their peers picked them to win. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like, wait, you're mad, but you can be you're mad at the wrong people. <laughs> so, anyway. Hollywood hypocritical? Man, mm. Imagine that. Uh, while the intentions are undoubtedly good, many fear it will have the opposite effect. One Emmy Award nominated white writer said, I've never known people so fearful. Fearful. Houses are being put up for sale. People are moving out because even when things get back to normal after the pandemic, there's not going to be any work. Hollywood's going to collapse and they deserve it. Um, it's about fairness. Another writer writes, I've spent the past three years mentoring young black writers, but now I'm out of a job and it's nothing to do with my abilities as a writer. People think of Hollywood as a place where dreams come true, but for people like me, it turned into a nightmare. Uh, do you believe in thought crime and, and picking people off one by one until everyone agrees with the thing, single point of view? And this is, they're talking about how they went after, um, they went after her because she was dating a guy who voted for Trump. So they said, yeah, I said many more people are keeping their heads down, fearing what will happen if they dare to speak out against the dogma of the time and the new totalitarians who promote them. There's been a steadily rising tide of, of conformity in recent years. Increasingly, we've been told what we're allowed to say here and no. And yeah, um, just talking about the mob mentality. I mean, it got so bad that a whole bunch of, of left wingers had to come out and uh, put out that statement. Uh, saying that, you know, cancel culture needs to stop. Mm -hmm. This needs to stop. It's gone too far. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't tell you who's spearheading all of this. If it's just everybody is so afraid of maybe possibly maybe getting canceled that they're all canceling each other to try to save themselves. But it's like it's not going to work that way. No. You know, you're going to get gone, too. You're just buying time, but mm -hmm. you're going to get gone, too. I just think it's dumb. And what's going to happen is, um, you know, it, uh, in some ways it might be good in the fact that we might get some some cool new things for people that might not have had a chance otherwise. That might happen. But we're also going to get a lot of things that are just going to be more, you know, everybody goes to the movies and, and wants to read comics and books because they want an escape. And now it's just going to be more polit politics shoved down your yeah. throat is what's going to happen. Um, I mean, I am excited in the fact I think we will get some interesting new new people that we would not have otherwise got to see. So yeah, I think there is. Yeah. A, I think there is a plus side on this, but I think it's more negative than positive. Yeah, I think what, and again, it's it's not coming from a place of being genuine. It's, yeah, that yes. It's it's coming from a place of fear. Right. So it's not about you know people that are necessarily the best or the you know perfect for the part. They're going to change everything. And it doesn't seem like any, you know, I mean, basically, if you if you're white in any way, whether you're a male or female, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it matters at this point. You know, yeah. I, I mean, look, and again, Brie Larson's on 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 YouTube now. I, I have to wonder. I really do, because maybe maybe they're taking it to heart. Maybe they're like, yeah, you know, it should have been Monica Rambeau after all. And she's one out there saying, hey, that we need more diversity. It yeah, would look really bad of her to, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can basically woke yourself out of existence. And that's that's what's kind of going to happen here. And I, you know, I don't know. I mean, like I said, if it were actually coming from a genuine place of uh, we're we're legit concerned about, you know, it bringing more voices into Hollywood and we, you know, th that's fine. But this isn't this is this is fear. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're throwing people under the wheels of the bus. We're throwing our peers under the wheels of the bus because we're afraid Twitter is going to cancel us. And uh, you know, I have to wonder if if we're not going to have like an alternative entertainment industry grow up alongside of like That's Hollywood and comics too. and gaming because this is happening all over. It's not. Right. It's not just. Hollywood is not just comics. We've seen it in comics for years now, but it's never enough. It's like, you know, as soon as you have like one goalpost, like let's bring more XYZ people. Okay, that's fine. Now it's like, okay, let's bring these. Now these people aren't trendy anymore. It's not trendy just to have women. They have to be well, I think what's women happen plus too, ultra. What, yeah, <laughs> what's going to happen too, I think it's, and that's not really fair, is people that are friends, like, you know, because not, because, you know, in the real world, you can be friends with people that aren't like you. It are happens you, all what? the time. No. And is it going to be a case of where now people can't be friends with who they want to be friends with because, you know, they're not allowed, they're hanging around with that white guy, they're going to get, they're going to not be hired anymore because he's their friend. So it's going to be a matter if you can't date who you want to date, you can't, even the people that are allowed in can't be friends with they want to be friends with can't date who they want to date can't and it, you know so it's a gilded cage for everyone in in some regards yeah it's it's i mean we saw what happened with you know some some white actors even that thought they were doing the right thing and they were kind of like you know told by twitter that they weren't i mean this is where is it going to end it's going to cause everybody to not trust anybody else everybody is going to be i mean it's just going to cause fear confusion doubt backstabbing um, it almost feels almost feels like a communist regime. Maybe we don't need friends anymore. Maybe we just need comrades. That's right. And we have to be loyal to this ideology. And if anyone steps out of line to save our own necks, we got to throw them under the wheels of the bus. I'm just going to watch shows I think look interesting and watch because I want to watch. But if it's something that I think looks stupid or forced or, or you know, doesn't feel genuine, I'm just not going to I'm not going to give them my money. Yeah. I mean, that's how it's going to work, because eventually eventually you know uh the free market is going to will out whether it's it's hollywood you know gets with the program and produces content that people actually want to pay to watch Mm -hmm. or they run out of money because everything else going on they got to make stuff that people want to watch you know and it doesn't matter who makes it it's just it's got to be something that's marketable uh or there is an alternate uh entertainment industry Mm -hmm. that grows up alongside and people migrate out of the hollywood system out of the the, you know publishing system uh the gaming and all that and they move over to this alternate uh entertainment i think it's gonna gonna take out hollywood yeah because hey you know what i'm just saying pittsburgh's really set up for uh for this kind of thing they've done many movies in pittsburgh you know maybe they should start their own Hollywood and Pittsburgh. Maybe. Well, what's going to happen is it's it's going to be survival. And look, I mean, you can be as woke as woke can be, but if you can't feed your family, at the end of the day, you're going to find a way to make money. Right. And that's what's going to happen. A lot of these people are probably going to get displaced from Hollywood, and they're just going to find a way to make money. Uh, it happened in comics. It's happening in gaming. Right. Um, and that's, I, I think we'll we'll see that. And that's why I think you've got Hollywood kind of panicking and bringing people over to YouTube because they're like, oh my God, they can do an end run around the system. We can't allow that. Can't have that happen. Uh, we got to control everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm, like, again, we're wrapping this up in a second. But again, I am 100%, I know Neon's 100% for uh, real diversity. Yeah, absolutely. And for, you know, uh, different voices being heard and some, you know, more more people getting a chance. We're 100% for that. But we're talking com- diversity, not exclusion it's never right i don't care who's being excluded it's not okay and i'm sorry this 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 whole revenge a fear of cancellation thing is is every bit as unacceptable as you know people not being allowed to have a turn because they're they're not white i mean it's all it's all wrong there is a right way to do it there's a balanced way to do it and i think that that's what we're for we're for balance and fairness and uh meritocracy yeah and um that's what we stand for. I, I believe the best person should get the job, that that hiring process should be colorblind. I believe that mm-hmm. everybody should have equal opportunity. I do believe that, you know, giving people equal opportunity, but some people, regardless of skin color, gender, uh, orientation, are just naturally going to be better at things than mm-hmm. other people. That's just how it works. And and the people who make the better stuff, the better products, or make a better hire should be the ones that get the job. I, I mean, that's just how I feel about things. So. Whatever. What do I know? I'm just a middle-aged white guy. Yeah, well, you're, you don't matter. I, I, I'm. I'm. This is my last video. No, he's uh, kidding. Geeky is replacing me. I. I don't know with who. That's I think right. She put a casting Buckle call up out. Avengers, let's go. She put a casting call out. I'm no longer on the channel. I've That's been right. canceled. 
Uh, all right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.